while I call upon Mr. Kamal Murarka, Chairman WTC Mumbai, for the welcome address. Your Excellency Dr. Mukhisa Kitiu, Mr. You know Frederick Aga, Ms. Dorothy Tembo, Her Excellency Minister from Czech Republic, Michela Marksova, Ruby Dalla from Canada, our own person of Indian origin, who has done us proud. Other dignitaries on the dais. And my colleagues. It's a, indeed a pleasure to welcome you all to this sixth Global Economic Summit. I must confess, when the first one was held, I was not sure whether we can keep up the memento year to year. But it goes to the credit of my colleagues, vice presidents and the officials of the WTC that each year it gets a little better. This year the subject chosen is of contemporary relevance, the empowerment of women. Before I go to that, I must give the background of what World Trade Center is. There are 321 World Trade Centers all over the world in 89 countries. It is a network of its own. We are in touch with all of them. Now, of course, with email and all, it become much easier. So we are all, we all know each other, what's happening in each of the 300 and odd World Trade Centers. I am proud to say Bombay is one of the more active ones. India being a growing, aspiring economy, there is a lot of interest. And the Mumbai World Trade Center tries to do its bit. Last year we received, last year means year ending 16, 17 is yet to end. We received 60 foreign delegations during the year, which comes to more than one a week. So we are currently in touch with all countries, wherever there is action, where there is promotion of international trade, and wherever there can be mutual benefit. Coming to the subject, it is strange that as far as women's education and emancipation is concerned, the East has, ha, has marched past the West. We are in Maharashtra, which is the westernmost uh, state of India. The tradition here was late 19th century. We had a lady called Savitri Bai Phule, P-H-U-L-E. She was the first one to write a letter. At that time there was British rule. We were a colony of the British. She wrote a letter to the local, she was in Pune, near Bombay. She wrote a letter that unless women's education is encouraged, our progress will not happen. For her time, it was a path-breaking thing. Her husband, Jyoti Rao Phule, gave her full support. In Bombay today, we have the statue of Jyoti Rao Phule, recognition of Savitri Bai Phule, because today it's easy to talk. This is a Wi-Fi, computer, internet age. Information is available at the fingertip. But in those days, to even think that Indian women who were always in, uh, it was a patriarchal society, so they didn't, they didn't have opportunities to root for educating women and writing to the British commissioner was a path-breaking thing. There is a story, there are films on her. She and her husband had to undergo a lot of hardship to open a school for women, which was opposed not only by the British, it was opposed even by the feudal lords of that era. They put them into all sorts of trouble. In spite of that, they succeeded. Again, when it comes to public life, the first woman prime minister of the world was in Sri Lanka. Then there was Golda Meir in Israel, Indira Gandhi in India, and Pakistan, Bangladesh, all have had lady prime ministers. Kathmandu, Nepal has had a lady president. So in our part of the world, though we are still primitive in our thinking, old traditions are there, men always like to dominate women, but in spite of that, we have a good record of women taking part in. We have had a women president of India, we had a woman Supreme Court judges. Women in India are in the, have a reasonable space for themselves in this male-dominated world. Of course, our subject is not public life. It is entrepreneurship, innovation and capacity building. 
I must say, Indian, the younger lot, educated Indian women, are coming in all fields of entrepreneurship, be it uh, software, be it fashion, be it uh, manufacturing. Everywhere there are Indian women running the companies on their own, not together with their husband or brother or anybody. I am very happy that we are having this conference in which we have, I think, two, three hundred delegates. We are going to talk today and tomorrow. We have had an exhibition which is going on for three days. We had a glimpse of it, but there is ample time to go through, which showcases handicrafts and handloom material from all over India. I can only thank His Excellency. We have UNCTAD, WTO, ITC, ZEC Republic. We have the whole uh, band of international the organizations which regulate international trade. I am sure we will benefit from their views and I wish the delegates all the best for the next two days. If there is, we will try our best. Our hospitality is quite well known. But if there is any lacuna, please excuse us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murarka. Among other things, especially for narrating Savitribai Phule's pioneering hard work in the field of women's education in India, in spite of multiple hurdles leading to overall progress. Thank you. <laughs>